through right now. <laughs> one next year, one this year. <clears throat> Good evening and welcome to the November 16th, 1999 regular scheduled meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. First item on the agenda is the approval or changes in the minutes of the previous meeting. Thank you, Second. Nancy. <clears throat> Second. Seconded by Mr. Parkhurst. Any further discussion concerning the minutes? No. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. Thank you to the public for their patience while we reviewed the correspondence which was on the podium this evening. Correspondence received was a letter from S. Collins in regards to the Scout House restaurant, a letter from H. Strout regards to telecommunications amendment, a letter from B. Hopkins in regards to telecommunications amendments, zoning news of September 1999, planning commissioner's journal, fall 1999, letter from W. Pluff in regards to the Scout House, Shoreland zoning news, fall 1999, Shoreland news, October 1999, MMA workshop, 12 2 99 fame 1999 reservation form, a letter from D and M. Gore in regards to the Scout House. In addition, this evening, we have received a letter from Sally Daggett, attorney, in regards to the Scout House restaurant. A letter from Scott Belfour in regards to the Scout House restaurant application. A letter from Alice and Peter Rand in regards to the Scout House application. A letter from Sarah Bork in regards to the Scout House application. A letter from Jim Bork in regards to the Scout House application. A letter from Edward Finnegan Baum in regards to the Scout House application. A letter from Paul and Elizabeth McKinney in regards to the Scout House application. Uh, we have a petition which at my count is approximately 60 names with letters attached in regards to the Scout House application. A letter from Mary Townsend and John Donnelly in regards to the Scout House application. A letter from Mark Kefner and Nancy Bogg in regards to the Scout House application. A letter from Thomas and Patricia Brigham in regards to the Scout House application. Also a letter, two letters from Chief Phil McGoldrick concerning the new right-of-ways, which we'll be acting on later in this evening's duration. And I believe I covered everything. You can see why we needed that 15 minutes to read everything. We have one item this evening on the consent agenda. Library parking lot extension site plan request by the town of Cape, Cape Elizabeth to extend the site plan approval for the library parking lot extension located off Scott Dyer Road for one year. Section 19-9-4B4 site plan review procedures. Maureen, would you like to follow up on this, please? Certainly. Uh, there's a, a lot that's adjacent to the parking lot, lot at the library, and last year the town of Cape Elizabeth came forward for a site plan. Uh, for an extent expansion of the parking lot. Uh, this was approved last November, and the town has not yet funded the construction of the parking lot, and they would like to request a one-year <coughs> extension of their site plan approval. Any questions? Ms. Parkers. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials previously submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for a one-year extension to the regular... November year 2000 planning board meeting of the site plan approval of the library park expansion be approved as a consent agenda item. A motion has been made. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, David. Second. second has been made. Is there further discussion of this matter? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> Under old business, there is one item on the agenda this evening, 1231 Shore Road Site Plan Approval Reconsideration, request by Everett and Linda Johnson for reconsideration of the site plan approval granted by the Planning Board for the 1231 Shore Road Restaurant on October 19, 1999. 
Planning Board Rules and Regulations, Section 4. We have asked Michael Hill, Counsel to the Town and the Planning Board, to be here this evening. Uh, Mr. Hill, would you please approach the podium? If you could begin, Mr. Hill, just outlining for the Board the proper procedures they should follow, and then I'll open it up for the Board to ask questions of Mr. Hill if you have any. Sure. Thank you. Uh, a motion to reconsider can be made uh, by a member who voted uh, in the majority uh, at, last, at the last meeting. The motion can be seconded by anyone, so whether you voted for or against uh, the matter, you can second the motion. Uh, then the board may deliberate on whether the matter should be uh, reconsidered, talking about uh, your findings of fact and so forth and, and why you may feel that it needs to be reconsidered, uh, and then call a vote. And the vote will be by simple majority. And if the vote passes to reconsider, then uh, the board has the discretion to open the matter up, take further uh, comment from the applicant and opponents to the matter. And, uh, and then, so you're basically exactly where you were prior to voting on the matter at, last, at the last meeting. So you could approve it, approve it with conditions, deny it, table it. Um, if, if nobody moves to reconsider, then the, the matter is closed and the original decision from last month would stand. Thank you, Michael. Are there questions from board members? Mr. Emery. Uh, Mr. Chairman, is it appropriate at this time to ask uh, Mr. Hill to comment on the allegations of the applicant or the assertions of the al uh, applicant uh, with respect to the uh, positive vote at the last meeting? In terms of uh, there were several issues. One was the issue of the uh, setback to the parking and then others were a procedural issue I believe and in, in with respect to whether or not the applicant had an opportunity to speak after the uh, vote at the last meeting or uh, prior to the vote. I have no objections to specific questions if you have no objections Professor, to answering me at this time. Sure. Um, I had basically addressed those issues in my November 10th letter uh, to Maureen which I believe has been distributed to the board members. Um, First, whether the board had to allow opposition uh, comment to the application at, at your last meeting in October. Um, the board has a discretion whether to hold a public hearing on a site plan review in the first place, and, and you, you voted to have a public hearing which was held uh, in September, I believe, at the September meeting. Uh, so. Uh, the public hearing portion was closed at the September meeting, and the board did not have to allow any further public comment at your October meeting, which was essentially a uh, continuation of your deliberations and review of some amendments that were made to the site plan. So I don't think that that was a procedural error, in my opinion. The, the second issue uh, was whether it was a mistake of law with respect to basically the setback of the parking lot uh, where the, uh, not the parking lot to the rear, but the uh, five lots uh, to the side, if you will, of, of the scout house. Uh, and, you know, reasonable minds can differ as to how uh, the zoning ordinance could be interpreted. And it's my opinion that the board was within its discretion in, in determining uh, that the placement of the driveway and those five lots meet the, set, the setback and ordinance requirements. Uh, section 19.64D2 has a minimum setback from the sideline of 15 feet for a parking lot, and that that setback can be reduced to zero if there's a uh, shared parking lot, um, re reduced to zero along that common parking uh, boundary line. The definition of a parking lot includes access ways and aisles, so the board was certainly within its discretion to determine that the uh, 
driveway as part of the parking lot. That portion of the driveway uh, is shared in the sense that the uh, Johnsons and their invitees and guests have the right to travel over that driveway to get to their parking area. Uh, and the proposal is that the um, Scout House restaurant guests and invitees could come along that same driveway go in, so they'd be sharing that portion of it going into their, their parking lot. So, um, in my professional opinion, the, the board is, uh, was certainly acting within its discretion to determine that. Uh, and it, again, reasonable minds can differ on that. So. But I'm, I'm comfortable with the board's decision. Does that answer your question, Mr. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Further questions of Mr. Hill? Mr. Emery. Uh, there was one issue with respect. Um, this may require going into executive session because it, uh, or whatever the proper term is, um, because it deals with a case pending before the town on a previous application. And one of the issues with that case was uh, whether or not the applicant, I'm sorry, the abutter, um, I don't know the correct legal term, but protested or, or contested the vote of the board after the board had, had uh, come to a decision uh, on the uh, proposal. In essence, what happened is that the applicant had addressed the board through correspondence and not in person at the meeting, so not being at the meeting was unable to uh, make a presentation. I want to be sure that we're not in a procedural issue here with respect to whether or not we open this meeting this evening um, and, and either allow or don't allow the uh, <coughs> abutters to speak with respect to this matter? Well, uh, if, if the board moves to reconsider its decision, it has the discretion as to whether to take any further uh, comments from abutters or the, or the applicant. Um, I, don't, I believe that, the, uh, that Maureen O'Mara has made the appropriate uh, notices uh, regarding this meeting and this item. So I'm not uh, concerned about that procedural issue. Thank you. I, Thank you. I would like to just say that I'm not uh, advocating for the, uh, the restaurant. My, my job is to advise the board as to whether your decision is sustainable uh, on appeal. And so my, my role is not to advocate for or against this particular application, but to advise you as to whether I feel your decision is sustainable, which I believe it is. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Is there further discussion by the board? Is there a motion that is going to be made? I, I would like to make, uh, I'm not going to propose a motion to uh, reopen the hearing, but I think I'd like to take an opportunity and, and present the reasons why. Uh, I've, I've, I rely on Corporation Council with respect to our interpretation of the ordinance and procedures. Um, I think more importantly, however, this has been a very long uh, presentation. Uh, there's been several workshop meetings. Um, we had a discussion many years ago, several years ago, when the issue of customer service came up and how can we better serve the customer. And the dilemma that the Planning Board always uh, faces, and I'm sure other uh, departments, administrative departments in town face is who is the customer. We see the customer as both the applicant and as interested townspeople. And uh, that being the case, we have before us a customer, so to speak, uh, who is uh, the owner of the property and has made a, uh, an application to the town and has met, as far as I can see, all the requirements of site plan. We have an abutter uh, who's uh, feels that they're being unreasonably impacted. Uh, we have asked the applicant to uh, address those issues, and uh, I believe they've been addressed. Uh, we've been deluged with three-sentence objections. I wish the people that wrote us uh, this evening and signed all the petitions during this long process had come before uh, us at the public hearing or any time prior to this. Um, at some point, I think... 
the process has, has to come to a conclusion. And if there's appeal procedures which, which have to rely upon the courts after that, then I, then I guess that's where this has to go, at least in my opinion. But several specific comments just to reinforce what the conclusions that were reached as a positive vote. When one is the issue of the lot being too small. The issue of the lot being too small is addressed in site plan review. It's addressed with impervious cover. It's addressed with drainage, uh, landscaping requirements, and any, any number of ways in which the, the size of the lot can be measured, whether or not the parking can be accommodated on the lot. To make it very clear that at least with respect to the correspondence I saw, there's no off-site parking that's going to contribute to the seating in this restaurant. All of the required parking for the seating proposed in the restaurant is met on site. Several people commented on the issue of traffic. There, there is an issue at the intersection. It's recognized. It was recognized in the traffic report, but it falls upon the uh, town's desire to put in a traffic light or not put in a traffic light. And to penalize everybody who owns property in the town center or near the town center because the town's unwilling to put in a traffic light just seems unreasonable. Um, there was a term uh, with respect that when a uh, couple uh, in one of the letters people moved to Cape Elizabeth to avoid industrialization. I think to call this industrialization is an ex extremely unfair and emotional characterization of the proposal before us. Uh, and lastly, I think there's an expectation that all property owners should have in Cape Elizabeth. That's perhaps why some of our overlay zoning with respect to nursery schools and daycare centers are a little inflammatory because no one can tell quite where they're going to land. But within the town center, uh, we have permitted uses, and the applica applicant has come before us with a permitted use. This is not a special condition or exceptional use or something that's required as own change. Um, and uh, that town center study was, was uh, underway for some time. Many of us uh, were involved in that. Um, so I, I guess that's, that's my feeling. I certainly understand the concerns of the uh, abutters, and, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm going to stand by the, the vote that I previously uh, gave at the last meeting. Thank you, Tom, for outlining the decision-making process we went through over the past three months. Further discussion by the board? Al? Chairman, the uh, <clears throat> motion to reconsider can be an extremely valuable tool uh, to any fact finder. Uh, since uh, receiving my packet from Maureen, I've very carefully gone over everything in the packet. And I think that the primary focus on the motion to reconsider should be, is there a, an error in the procedure that we used in reaching our decision, or is there an error of law that should be corrected uh, before the case uh, goes to court? The fact that the vote was uh, four to three uh, shows that it was very close, and there are very valid points on both sides. Now, I'm satisfied by Mr. Emery's uh, examination of Mr. Hill here tonight and Mr. Hill's response that he is comfortable uh, with the procedure and the law in this case and feels that he can adequately uh, uh, defend our decision, the decision of the majority of the board. Uh, for that reason, I will not move to, uh, to reconsider. Thank you. Further discussion? Although those three members voting in the minority at last month's meeting can't make the motion, I'm more than willing to allow you to speak. Hearing no further discussion, is there a motion to be made? Hearing none, this matter is closed. Thank you. <coughs>
If I may, those members who wish to discuss the matter that was previously before the board, uh, the Jordan conference room is behind us, and there's a cafeteria room downstairs if you would like, please. Under new business, Zazak Carew private access waiver request by Stewart and Candace Carew and Sandra and William Zazak for a private access way permit for lots R2 9A and R2 9D located at 411 and 413 Old Ocean House Road, section 19 7 9 private access provisions. The applicant or the representative like to come forward, please. <coughs> Father Public Record, sir, if you could wait till you get to the microphone, or else we won't hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Hall, and I'm here for the applicant. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot about the microphone. Uh, we uh, received, as all applicants do, uh, comments from the various re review agencies and from Maureen, and we've made every effort to, uh, to react to those, and I'd like to provide members of the board um, uh, a revised plan so that uh, you can follow along as I make my presentation. Would that be different from the plan we received in our packet? Slightly, yeah. Okay. If you could, sir, discuss the changes from the plan you just presented to us, although minor, from the plan that we received in our mailed packet. Yes, I, I can do that. And would you like me to do that? Before we go through the, the you can do it as you go, as long as you okay. bring up the changes, if you would, please. Sure. Um, <clears throat> and I'm focusing first on the complete list, completeness uh, checklist, and uh, going down through item number C uh, was a, a, a note about uh, uh, the fact that the plan needed a, a note about the maintenance, and that has been added, it's uh, uh, note number 11 on the, uh, on the plan. <clears throat> on uh, another comment w which was, uh, was indicated as, as partially completed, dealt with uh, sewage disposal, utilities, uh, location names of existing streets. And I want to comment on that briefly. You'll recall uh, that, that this is somewhat a unique situation since both houses are in existence, and there's also uh, a private uh, waiver access or private access waiver in existence. And what uh, what we are asking permission from the board is to is to change the configuration and delete this portion of it and to add a, a portion over here. So, a, a couple of things uh, that and what we did in in uh, in a Dealing with the, uh, the review comments, we tried to focus on the things that, uh, that we sensed uh, you were uh, really concerned about. The, uh, we didn't indicate utilities because the utilities are all in place and not affected in any way, as, as you've seen from the, the uh, memorandum. And you may recall from uh, the workshop, we talked about uh, existing streets, and the suggestion was to... Um, to include uh, a portion of the tax map so that the board could have a picture in its mind about leaving this area and going back up to Old Ocean House Road, and, and uh, we did that. We also, uh, uh, the one other thing I'd like to mention uh, is that in 
the items dealing with uh, uh, drainage courses and floodways and natural features and surface drainage, uh, we did not include because, again, the both houses are in, are in existence uh, and uh, there's no change in, in any of those items from uh, the, the uh, permission that was granted uh, three or four years ago. The, you probably did note from, uh, from the, uh, the comments that essentially drainage is a sheet flow into the, uh, into the ocean. <clears throat> we, uh, we have indicated more prominently that there's a fire hydrant. Uh, it was shown on the, the plan you saw, but we've, we've indicated that uh, in a more prominent uh, manner and also with a note to, uh, to make that clear. Uh, we have also uh, indicated the, uh, the approved uh, building envelope, which was one of the, uh, the notes uh, in the review comments on the, uh, the Zajac property. And we have submitted uh, to uh, Maureen uh, an executed maintenance agreement on the, the format uh, that the town uh, suggests. So that, in, in reviewing the, the completeness uh, checklist, that kind of Hits the uh, hits the changes. Thank you. Other questions of the board? Call the applicant. Seeing Mr. Chairman, just a, as a comment, oh, Mr. Chairman. maybe a motion is that um, in terms of completeness, in keeping with the, um, the way in which the board has, has always handled applications, the, the information that's in our packet is the determination of completeness or uh, deadlines and so forth. We don't receive typically information that's provided the night of the meeting. Um, so shall our motion a motion be uh, directed toward the information that's in the packet. I'm going to ask our planner to answer that if she could. Um, typically that's the way you've done it, although usually you don't receive a whole new plan at the meeting. Um, sometimes if there's one piece of information like the maintenance agreement missing and someone brings it to the meeting, you will, you'll, you'll, you'll accept it as a completeness issue. Um, I think it's much more important that um, you not accept information on the plan as meeting potential conditions of approval rather than the completeness checklist. Okay. Uh, specifically, what we've done in the past is if there were proposed conditions of approval which the board wanted to impose, you include those as part of your approval anyway, and that way that gives staff time to check the plans to make sure it's actually been done. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? <clears throat> Like to call for a motion, Steve. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Stewart and Candace Carew and Sandra and William Zajac for a private access way permit for lots R2-9A and R2-9B, located off Old Ocean House Road, be deemed complete. A motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second by David Griffin. Further discussion by board members? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand, please. It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shall I proceed, Mr. Chairman? I believe you're done. <laughs> no? Okay. Let me take my reading glasses off. Proceed. Thank you. I'm going to turn next to the, uh, there's a November 9, a 1999 letter from uh, OSA Associates, your consultant, which is attached to Maureen's memorandum. And uh, Maureen uh, suggested uh, that uh, the points in, in that document be a condition of approval, and I just wanted to uh, discuss them briefly. Uh, the first one was uh, a comment to make it uh, clear on the plan uh, exactly what the change was going to be. And what we did uh, in that regard was to, uh, was to highlight the area that was going to be discontinued 
and also uh, put a general note 12 indicating, even though there's no change in the configuration, indicating uh, that that, uh, that is also a, a change on the plan. The second item uh, had to do with uh, uh, the fire chief's uh, view and Maureen delivered to me this evening a letter from uh, the fire chief indicating that, uh, that he uh, had, had reviewed the matter. Now I understand uh, from the proposed condition that, that th that's kind of before uh, it's finally built out and he will also be, uh, be uh, viewing it afterwards to make sure he's satisfied and that's a pr proposed condition, but uh, that letter has come in. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but uh, we did put a note on the plan, which was, again, note 11, uh, that the town is not responsible for maintenance, plowing, and so on. And finally, uh, uh, on uh, the road cross sections, we did show the, the side slopes and, and width of the uh, drainage on each side, and also uh, that it would be M dot grade B asphalt. So that, that was all the, uh, the comments uh, that, that he made. And I'm happy to answer any questions on that before I go on to the final little part of this. Discussion by behalf, on behalf of the board. Okay, finally, uh, I'm just going to look at the, uh, the standards uh, very, very briefly. Uh, we, uh, as, as we talked about the, the night of the, uh, the workshop, uh, we, we did not include uh, surveys and so on all the way out to Old Ocean House Road, but did include uh, a copy of the tax map so that, that the board would have uh, a picture in, in its mind of, of that uh, existing uh, road. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to skip over a couple of. Uh, we've uh, shown uh, the the existing width or the width of the traveled way specifically uh, uh, in a numerical sense. <clears throat> the uh, there's a, was a comment about uh, sight distance, and and I think in in Maureen's memo it, it was mentioned that that had been previously approved. Uh, uh, when the, the, the uh, waiver was granted three or four years ago. And again, that, that had to do with up by Old Ocean House uh, Road. <clears throat> Building envelope we have talked about. So I think that covers everything else, Mr. Chairman. Again, be happy to answer any questions. Questions or comments from the board? Tom? A uh, brief question. Uh, it appears that the uh, proposed realignment falls within the Carew property. Is that correct? The, uh, the, the realignment, uh, uh, a portion of it is in the, in the Zajac property, and a portion of it is in the, in the Carew property. So that, yes, the answer to your question, that's correct. The... Uh, I, I suppose it's a legal question, but uh, with respect, it, the only um, the only indication on the plan is it says dedicated easement. See General Note Nine with respect to the yes. Process there, of the there are as as we've talked about before. Uh, there uh, there's there are existing easement uh, deeds down into this area because of the two existing houses and. Uh, I'd be happy to, uh, to submit that information to Mr. Hill if you'd like to make sure he's satisfied with that, uh, that language. Are, are the existing dirt driveway, as labeled dirt drive on the plan, and the proposed gravel drive, are those, would those both be defined the same within the same easement description? The, uh, the easement descriptions, as I understand them, Mr. Emery, are, are uh, somewhat uh, vague. Uh, uh, partially because you know this was an existing single house, and then some years ago turned in, into uh, into two. I mean, we certainly have no objection to uh, to the extent uh, 
you would like it described more precisely to do so. The, the only question I have is if it's clear to the other members of the board and clear to the planner and the code enforcement officer, and particularly as these things gain history very quickly, is to uh, what easement is referring to what and if there's a need to specifically state what the easement is for. Because I don't see anything on this plan. It's, it's labeled as a gravel driveway and, and maybe under uh, – land use laws, it's not required to state specifically what it's for on the plan itself. It, but note 9 says a dedicated right-of-way shown here on is defined as shown 30 foot wide. In I guess that, that's enough. It says it's a right-of-way. So is there any conflict between easement and right-of-way? It's referred to as a right-of-way. No, no, those words interchangeable. are interchangeable. And I just saw that, so that I don't leave any misimpression. The, there, there's an existing easement from several years ago to provide access to this house, uh, and uh, it, it, my sense is it isn't as precise, it, it, well, it doesn't precisely cover this area uh, because this area wasn't in existence, but, the, but it is adequate to, uh, for the uh, Zajax to have access to their property. And I think I've read the material correctly, but is this gravel driveway now constructed, or to what point has it been constructed? It's, uh, it sits right now in a, in a gravel state. It, it uh, does not have asphalt or anything like that. Uh, uh, construction was discontinued uh, when uh, uh, requested by the code enforcement officer. But it is passable? It is passable, yes. Okay. And is it the intent with the dirt drive that that will be discontinued and it will be loamed and seeded? Yes. This, this area... Uh, sits, uh, it's probably two or three inches lower than the surrounding grass and it just sits as an area of loam right now and, and uh, the, uh, the, the plan is uh, to, to uh, before uh, the end of the month uh, to blacktop this area to stabilize it and to uh, uh, grass this area to stabilize it. The, I checked myself on the Plants don't close until like Thanksgiving week, so that okay. is achievable. Uh, the only other question I have is: uh, this, Is there a am I, is there an abutter to the um, northwest? There's none of the offsite or none of the abutters that aren't either the crews or the Zajax aren't indicated on our plan. Should those be on the plan? I submitted in the, in the application the, uh, the, the tax map, and I can't give you the name of the abutter here, but you come, you come down through to, to an area where there's two pillars, and you turn to the right and, and come by a home that would be, I would guess, about the width of this plan further to the west. That, that's generally Mr. Emery, Maureen has that answer if you yeah. want it. You want to know who the abutter is? No, I'm, I'm wondering if it, if it has to be on the plan. Um, no, it doesn't have okay. to be on the plan. I have heard from that abutter, though. They know what's going on, okay. as, right. as well as the abutters to the um, west. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, David. <clears throat> just a clarification. Um, the proposed turnaround... It shows a line in there that it will be brick uh, to a certain portion, and then it refers to it down here in the turnaround that it will be eight, eight millimeter brick pavers. Is that, it, would I understand that it's not going to be paved, a major part of the turnaround, or is it all going to be paved? My understanding is uh, that the, and I can, I can see your point, uh, the, the brick, I think, well, I don't want to speculate on that. I, I see the, the reason for your, let me just look at this for one sec. I know, uh, I know that uh, the original plan was to, to brick the whole turnaround. And, and uh, I frankly would have to check, and I could make a phone call and come back and answer that for you. Uh, it, it may be that, that the brick may not go that far at this point, but I do know that the, the configuration 
is such that it will support the weight of, uh, of a fire truck. It's just that it's confusing here. It indicates here that it, that it is all paved. Right. I, I follow your point, and, and I, David, I think, I think Ma the Maureen has a comment that might clarify that. I, I may be wrong, but I believe what happened is that when the, the applicants came in and they put in a turnaround and, and they were intending to pave it, and um, when they realized they needed to provide a turnaround adequate for a ladder truck, uh, their plans had to change. And the fire chief brought the ladder truck down there and they used the ruts in the grass to measure where they were going to be putting the pavers. And I believe the, the attempt at the pavers is so that they don't have to use asphalt on a large enough area for the fire truck to turn around. So when I was reading the plan, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but my assumption was that part of it was going to be asphalt part of it was going to be brick paver, but there was going to be a large round area that was going to be solid for the ladder truck to turn around on. Okay. And, that, uh, and that is my understanding, that, uh, and I'm sorry I can't be more precise in the configuration. Uh, it, it may be very well that it's, that it's shown as, as intended to have a, a, a brick area that would be what a, a car would normally use, but also to have the larger area in case a fire truck ever needed to turn. What I can assure you is that the, that the uh, uh, strength, if you will, of the construction, uh, whether brick or asphalt, is sufficient to hold the weight of the truck. I, I think it's your obligation to make sure that it is capable of handling it, but I, I, I just thought I'd raise that. I, I appreciate that, so, Mr. Griffin. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wilcox, Mark. <clears throat> Uh, uh, Mr. Hall, uh, I might make a suggestion that you might also clarify the label which says uh, eight millimeter brick pavers. Uh, eight millimeters is about a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, I suspect that the intent there is eight centimeters, which would be over three inches and would be bricks on edge rather than bricks laid flat, which makes, it, which makes them much stronger. Thank you very uh, much. But that's not really something we can assume. Thank you. I'll see that uh, both those uh, uh, corrections are made immediately. Thank you, Mark. Further comments? Is there a motion to be made? Mr. Chairman? Tom? Assume I can get to it in time. Um, motion uh, for the board to consider. Findings of fact, Stuart and Candace Carew and Sander and William Zajac are requesting a private access permit for lots R2-9A and R2-9B, located off Old Ocean House Road, which requires review under Section 19-7-9 private access provisions. Two, the town engineer has recommended plan revisions needed to demonstrate compliance with the standards of Section 19-7-9-D4 private access way standards. Three, the maintenance agreement has been submitted, which needs to be completed and signed. Four, the applicant application substantially complies with Section 19-7-9 private access provisions. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Stuart and Candace Carew and Sandra and William Zajac for a private access way permit for lots R2-9A and R2-9B, located off Old Ocean House Road, be approved with the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised per the town engineer's comments in his letter dated 11 9 Two, that the maintenance agreement be signed and submitted in a form acceptable to the town planner and town attorney. Three, that there be no alteration of the site until the conditions of this approval have been satisfied. And four, that the construction of the turnaround be clarified. Thank you, Mr. Emery. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Parker. There's a motion and a second. Is there further discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Appreciate the opportunity to work with Maureen and you folks. I hope to see you again. In regards to the next item on the agenda, I am known to and a personal friend of one of the abutters and his parents. I foresee no apparent conflict, but in the interest of a possibility of a conflict, I'm going to step down and ask Mr. Wilcox to take over the chair, please.
Thank you, Mr. Carter. Uh, I'm happy to step in. And the next item on the agenda is the Chatmas Private Access Waiver. Uh, this is a request by Carmen T. Chatmas for a private access way permit for lot U 12-74B off of Pilot Point Road under section 19-7-9 private access uh, provisions. Uh, uh, the private access way permit uh, is for a lot off of Pilot Point Road, and this is a buildable, non-conforming lot adjacent to uh, an existing 20-foot wide paper street. Uh, the applicant and a butter are proposing an alternative lot access in this application that would be located along the side property line of the abutters lot. And at this point in time, uh, we will begin to uh, review the application. If we could have a uh, brief presentation uh, by the applicant, uh, we'd be happy then to begin reviewing for completeness of the application. Thank you. I'm Jay Chapness, representing the applicant, Carmen Chapness, owner of the parcel. And uh, the, the private access way is being applied for. That this parcel is described as map U12, lot 74B, and it's uh, depicted in yellow here. This is a portion of a subdivision off uh, Old Ocean House known as Shore Acres. Uh, this property is approached by Trundy Road, Wabin Road, Katahdin Road, which ends in Pilot Point Road uh, near the, the lot in question. As stated earlier, this lot is a vacant non-conforming lot of record shown on the original subdivision plans of Shore Acres. It's on the southeasterly side of Pilot Point Road. Behind and adjacent to <clears throat> 11 Pilot Point Road, which is the current residence of the applicant and is owned by the applicant. Lot 74B is a, a approximately 20,000 square foot lot. It lacks frontage on Pilot Point Road. The original subdivision plans provided for a 20 foot wide right of way, apparently to serve three lots, uh, 19 Pilot Point or Lot 74, Lot 74A, and Lot 74B. Currently, this 20 foot wide right of way is developed and this is shown in blue, to provide access to Lot 74 and Lot 74A. Uh, I originally presented to the planning board at the workshop last month in September uh, <coughs> the plan to continue this right-of-way, uh, continue this drive down the existing right-of-way to provide access to Lot 74B. This was our original intention. Subsequent to the planning board workshop, uh, I was approached by Keith McMullen, who is owner and occupant with his wife, Tanya McMullen, of Lot 74A. He and his family, he also owns partial interest in Lot 92 with other members of the McMullen family. Uh, he requested that we look at an, other approaches to the lot and subsequent to that, he offered a easement down the sideline of Lot 92 to connect with the existing right-of-way at the corner uh, of, the, of the properties. The, in consideration to the McMullins, uh, I readdressed the issue to uh, request the private access way down the sideline. Roughly the, the distance of development from the existing drive to this common point is roughly the same distance. This is 145 plus feet 
this is 150 feet. Roughly, the development would be the same, regardless of, of which approach was taken. This approach does pose uh, a few technical challenges as opposed, as opposed to the straight-in approach. But in consideration of them, I'd like to apply for a permit down the, the easement to join in with the existing right-of-way at this point. Regarding the standards for the private access way, this will serve only one lot, that lot being lot 74B. Uh, in essence, it will be a, a driveway for that one lot. Uh, one consideration in, in the standards, uh, deviation from the standards, the standards request a 30-foot wide right-of-way for the travel way. Uh, the original right-of-way on the plans is 20-foot wide. Uh, the easement proposed is also 20 foot wide to join into the existing 20 foot wide right of way. In that area, it's our intention to construct a uh, travel way, 14 foot wide travel way as, as described in the standards with the appropriate sub base uh, as described in the standards. Uh, the first 50 feet, uh, according to the standards, should be paved with asphalt. This was not shown on the subdivision plan. Uh, it was not shown on the uh, private access way plan. Uh, since it was not part of the submission requirements, I'll be happy to show that. Ultimately, it's probably our intention to asphalt this whole drive area and not just the first 50 feet for safety and convenience reasons to access the, the, uh, the property. Regarding gutter drainage, the drainage in this area is, is relatively straightforward. Uh, it slopes toward the Atlantic Ocean in this area. Uh, there is a natural gully which extends down where the original right-of-way was. Uh, water flows in this direction here. Uh, placement of the road in this area would cause no significant change of the water flow it would still flow toward the ocean down the, the existing gully. Um, I had a site walk with a, a professional engineer. Uh, he recommended culverts in two locations. Uh, there's little concern with water flow with toward any of the adjacent property, adverse water flow toward any of the adjacent property, with the exception of this area in here. Uh, he recommended providing a drainage swell along this outer border of the right-of-way. There's an existing natural stone wall and a 20-foot strip before the property of Ms. Scammon. Uh, this is the lower left. This lot is the uh, uh, corner property of Broad Cove area. There's no access between Shore Acres and Broad Cove in this area. But Fire Chief McGoldrick walked the site with me. He recommended this turnaround location. There's a fire hydrant uh, on Pilot Point Road in this area. Uh, he addressed two concerns regarding this path, uh, the, the turn here and the turn here. Uh, since the applicant owns this property, uh, it's our intention to, uh, although this radius meets the requirement of a 20-foot radius, it's our intention to make this uh, turn uh, accessible uh, if, as needed when the actual road is being put in. Site distance uh, is acceptable in both directions along Pilot Point Road. Pilot Point curves in this area, uh, and the curve is about 215 feet away from the proposed driveway, uh, which exceeds the revised minimum standards for site distance. Uh, 
This private access way will serve only one lot. All utilities are currently available on Pilot Point Road. Uh, water, sewer lines. It's our intention to bring in the utilities down the sideline of the road. Uh, there is a sewer manhole located right here, which on your survey shows as an SS. Uh, Bob Malley, Director of Public Works, is, is, was unavailable for comment, uh, but I spoke with the Acting Director of Public Works uh, yesterday. Uh, regarding tying into the existing manhole or placement of a new manhole, sewer manhole, at the entrance to this road. Uh, he said apparently either option could be used. Uh, the point from the edge of this road to the manhole is approximately 33 feet. And this is downhill and a, and a gravity feed from left to right for the existing sewer. Uh, the building envelope is shown on the, on the map with uh, consideration for the lot which is entirely in the Shoreland Performance Overlay District with appropriate setbacks from the normal high water line. Uh, contours are shown originally for the original plan right of way. Uh, the, the Street elevation is roughly the same at this point as it is at this point. Uh, so the, the contours were, have not been uh, exhibited on the proposed easement at this time. Uh, they were originally shown only on the first right of way. I hope these, uh, this presentation describes our desire. If you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer. Thank you. That was very helpful. Um, right now, I think the, what the board should begin doing, and we can come back uh, for questions of the applicant, is to, uh, uh, to focus on if there are any uh, questions on, in board members' minds uh, that relate to the material presented. Uh, and whether or not this material would then be uh, adequate for proceeding uh, to further discussion. Uh, is this a complete application? Uh, do any board members have uh, feelings one way or another on that? <coughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes, Tom. The issue before us is completeness? Yes. Um, uh, and just reviewing the town engineer's comments, he's, re he's observed a couple of conflicts and has requested some additional information. And th there's quite a bit of vertical change here, and I agree with the town engineer. Uh, neither the turn, uh, the first turn going down the hill, nor the second turn would appear to be anywhere near wide enough to accommodate uh, a fire engine. Um, I mean, typically those require 50-foot outside radius. and uh, Obviously, the applicant can meet with the fire chief, but I think what the town engineer has requested to complete the application is to be sure that that's, those turning requirements are appropriately delineated on the plan. Um, in our business, one of the calls we get frequently from homeowners is someone's built a house next door and now my basement's flooded or there's flooding on my property. And I see some potential for this given the fact that the runoff's running uh, parallel to the road and could... Uh, if the road isn't configured appropriately or the, or the culverts aren't configured uh, appropriately, it could end up running toward uh, Suzanne and Mark McMullen's house or um, perhaps even into your own house. Um, so I, I would feel better if we had uh, that information in front of us rather than just making it a condition of approval, I mean, of not approval, but of completeness, uh, unless uh, the town engineer... Um, would be reviewing something like that, and we could uh, rely upon the town engineer. I guess what I'm not clear on in an application of this sort, Maureen, these, these tend to be a little more schematic than anything else we review. And uh, if, if through your familiarity with, in discussions with the applicant or with the engineer or the fire chief, whether or not that's something that we can uh, defer to the town engineer. Um, 
we, we usually ask the engineer to write a letter that's very specific so that you can easily attach it as a condition of approval. The only concern I have with this is that he's raising the issue that there may not be enough room in the proposed right-of-way to do what you need to do. Um, mm -hmm. If all you were talking about is getting the, the right technical drawings within that right-of-way, it would be easy to make it a condition. Um, it might, you might still be able to make it a condition if the applicant were to agree to increase the right-of-way as necessary based on the town engineer's review and that the plans would be revised as needed. And with some other fundamental basic things, you're going to need to be able to get construction equipment. This, this is a vacant lot that you intend to build a new house on? The, the, the uh, site that you're trying to get to is, is vacant and you're going to build a new house on, the, on that vacant lot? That's correct. Things such as getting construction equipment down there, trucks that are going to be delivering lumber and, and things like that require a fairly generous turning radius. I know they sometimes do temporary roads and go straight down slopes, but um, that, that's my uh, greatest concern with respect to the application in terms of completeness. Yes, Nancy. You already negotiated that uh, right away. <clears throat> You've already negotiated that right of way. The uh, negotiated the easement with Mark McMullen. It has not. It has been approved in principle. Okay. It is pending uh, board permit. The, uh, the easement will take effect pending board permit. Okay. Um, I was wondering if, if you couldn't um, design that right away where you wouldn't have that abrupt turn at the end of the straightaway so you could get a fire truck around in, it. In this area? Yeah. At, at the corner. Uh, somebody else lo uh, owns lot 95. No. Uh, no. With the applicant. He owns this. Yeah. The applicant and myself own lot 95. I, I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the applicant and I own and reside in, in lot 90, the, the dwelling in lot okay. 95. It's our intention, and I did not make this clear, and I, I guess I should have, based on the response from Fire Chief McGoldrick regarding this turning radius, that it would be my desire to maintain a 20-foot wide right-of-way through the relevant straightaway portions of the private access way. At the points of the turn, the, the two turns in question, since we own this property, we have the liberty of addressing this turn and using a portion of our own property, property to make an appropriate turn. The second turn is the same situation. Mm -hmm. It's the lot in question. Um, it's, it's our intention to develop this, this turn as needed by coming out of the 20-foot mm -hmm. wide right-of-way. In this area, and the two straightaways, the three straightaway, for a 14-foot wide travelway, uh, it's, it's our understanding that an adequate road can be built in the 20-foot wide right-of-way. The two turns are the considerations mm -hmm. and, and us being able to take out a wider curve out of our own property. We intend on doing that as needed. What did you say about the fire chief? You didn't get uh, contact with the fire chief, but a, an assistant uh, you talked to? Is that right? The, the, the fire chief, we originally had the turnaround located in the upper portion of this property. I had a site walk with Fire Chief McGoldrick, and he requested that the turnaround be placed at the lower part of the mm -hmm. property. 
So this location for the turnaround was determined in the field by Fire Chief McGoldrick. We in turn uh, 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 place that on the survey as according to specifications, and this is a, a turnaround does meet the specifications. Okay. His concerns were yeah, I'm, wor I'm worried about those turns, not the turnaround, but they they <clears throat> do seem very sharp. And if you've got the uh, possibility of, of amending those curves, and you say that because you own all the property, you can. That, that's our intention, yes. And, and uh, discussing this and walking the site with a professional engineer as well as an excavation contractor, mm -hmm. uh, this can be accomplished according to both of those uh, individuals. The trouble is the map is misleading the chart. It's, it's misleading. The curves are. <clears throat> but neither one of these curves are 90 degree turns. They're even wider than 90 <clears throat> degree yeah. turns as they stand, uh, uh, as opposed to uh, a direct intersection. They, they intersect at a bit of an angle, which is even makes for a more favorable approach to the turn. But You're not we, worried. You're not worried. Well, uh, <laughs> it, I plan on making the road accessible, and mm -hmm. I plan on cooperating with the city fully, the town fully, to make this accessible. Uh, it's in our own benefit to do that. To have access to the to the lot, and we had the opportunity to take land as needed out of the corners to to accomplish that goal. Is this a um, a condition? I forget. It's so not a condition. Oh, we're we're on. Okay. Okay. Can I make a motion regarding completeness? Yes, Tom. Go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Motion for completeness. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Carmen Chatmus for requesting a private access way permit for lot U12 74B located off Pilot Point Road be deemed. Complete. Second. Any further discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, for the convenience of the applicant and to move things forward, I'm going to deem it complete, but my, my subsequent vote with regard to approval will indicate concerns that I have with issues that are outstanding in terms of completeness. Uh, I understand that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, any further discussions on materials submitted being complete? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion indicate by raising your right hand. Uh, now to proceed to uh, specific concerns uh, about uh, the, the physical aspects and the actual construction that would be taking place to build the road. Uh, is there any board discussion uh, on those items? Yes, Tom. I have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is regarding the, uh, the proposed turnaround that the fire chief has indicated that he wanted to move below. I just want to be clear with the uh, town planner that there are no resource protection or setback issues with respect to that turnaround. Uh, the building inspector has been on the site and has verified the shoreland zoning line and uh, reviewed these plans and hasn't identified any other issues. 
there's no overlying uh, resource protection due. I mean, it appears as though it's within, uh, it's less than 75 feet from the shoreland. I have been assured by the code enforcement officer that uh, the shoreland zone has actually been mapped as appropriate. The, the high water, actually, it's the, the normal high water line has, has been fixed in the right location and that the building envelope is set back 75 feet from there. I'm talking about the, the construction of the uh, t proposed turnaround within the resource protection. I'm, I'm not clear whether that's resource protection or whether it's just shoreland setback. Not, no, it's not resource protection. It's, um, it's in the shoreland overlay district. Mm -hmm. And uh, if he does construct the turnaround there, the only limit is that within uh, the, the overlay district, you can't cover more than 20% of the lot with impervious surface. So that area that the turnaround covers is going to go into the calculation. Okay. But um, he, if you see at the bottom here, it says the high water line, and then he moves back 75 feet, and that's where the building envelope begins to be drawn. So mm -hmm. there's no resource protection here. It's just the shoreland zone. <clears throat> I'm not clear where the lot is. Uh, is it the interior boundary of the proposed um, uh, easement or right-of-way? Uh, no. The, the, I, well... No, actually, the, the boundary of the lot is the heavy line, and the 20-foot the, the right-of-way is an actual uh, right-of-way that was created in the subdivision plan. Way back when. And it's a paper street. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know what you've discussed with, with any contractors or with the fire chief. It appears to me that... Um, as I said before, the, the grade coming down from uh, Pilot Point Road looks to be quite steep, and that inside radius and outside radius will have to be significantly uh, longer in order to accommodate a fire engine there. But I guess of equal concern is the second radius in that it appears as though it's going down about a 60% slope. It's dropping 20 feet vertically and 30 feet of horizontal run if, I'm, if this is a 30-scale plan which uh, anything in excess of 10 percent is, is extreme. So uh, it's not to say that you can't blast and construct that. Anything can be built. It's just that I think that, um, and, and it gets back to the town engineer's comments, I think there should be some grading done. I think there should be something that indicates to the satisfaction of the town engineer and perhaps a planning board that, one, that the radiuses are appropriate, and two, that the vertical alignment of the road works within the uh, proposed grades. Uh, and if there's any good news in that request is that it will save you the aggravation of someone coming on site and, and, and charging you for removing lead by a cubic yard off some non-negotiated price. I'm not assuming that would happen, but those are things that people generally get involved with that sometimes are unsuspecting. Um, and hopefully the drainage, when you do the road grading, the, the drainage will all work so that it's not sheeting onto any of the abutting properties. The, under, are both lots non-conforming, the existing upper lot and the lower They're lot? Legal both non -conforming non legal non-conforming. Legal non-conforming, okay. There's no issues with respect to non-conformance. Uh, the building inspector has reviewed that very carefully. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, in walking the site with the excavation contractor, uh, this ledge was identified. Blasting will need to be done. The blasted material will be shifted down mm -hmm. to this lower point with, with the intent of, of creating a, a, a steady grade from this point down. So, yes, this is steep in this area. Blasting, hopefully will uh, uh, rearrange that. Mm -hmm. It'll be a significant amount. I mean, it's going to take a lot of horizontal run to, to make that difference. So, <clears throat> Yes, Dave. Regarding, uh, Maureen, regarding the, uh, if I can ask this question, the right away. Um, the right of way coming down from pilot point to the first 90 degree or close to 90 degree turn is original from the original plot plan for the site? No, the, the, um, 
If you look at the plan that's up on the board where the blue driveway is, yes. that's the original alignment. Okay. And then it comes down at an angle. So that, th that new intersection that he's proposing is a brand new uh, easement that the abutter is proposing to provide in exchange for him not extending the driveway that's in blue. Okay. Now, I, I understand that now, but I thought the comment just a few minutes ago was reverse of that. But the engineer, the town en engineer, recommended, and the standard is 30 feet. And if that, I don't have a scale, but but I would think that if that right of way was made 30 feet, that your turning radius would be much easier to to make. And, and that uh, even though the pavement or the road surface would not be 30 feet wide, at least the base would be that wide that if an emergency occurred, you could get in and out of there much easier. There, there are two issues with the 30-foot right-of-way. Number one, the existing right-of-way is 20 feet. Uh, to place a 30-foot easement tying into a 20-foot wide right-of-way uh, is somewhat uh, uh, of a contradictory situation in that the existing right away is already 20 feet. Uh, second, if we increase this easement, let me state that the closest corner of the dwelling on lot 92 to the property line is 53 feet. With a 20 foot wide easement, that does not create a variant situation. It still allows 33 feet. If we increase this to 30 feet, uh, we create a variant situation as, in regard to side yard setback. Uh, regarding house number 95, the closest point is just over 26 feet. So uh, it's unlikely we can take any land toward lot 95 without creating a variant situation. So for those two aspects, we didn't want to create a variant situation with either house with the easement. And number two, since we were tying into an existing 20-foot wide right-of-way, we felt it appropriate to, to uh, do that with a 20-foot easement. Uh, again, uh, the corners could be addressed as if it was a 30-foot wide right-of-way. And I'm not an uh, excavation contractor nor a civil engineer, but uh, uh, if, if that makes sense, to have a blended situation was our intent. The straightaways being conforming to the existing 20-foot wide right-of-way with the two corners and enlarged as needed to approach the 30-foot right-of-way, and this being possible since we own the, the, both lands of the inside turn in question, that we could, we do have the liberty of enlarging the right-of-way in the location of the two turns in question. Thank you. Um, I still have a question. I'm not clear how it was resolved, but the our ordinance uh, requires 30 foot right away. Has that been addressed? Yeah, you you can waive that down to a lower we, standard. We have the right to waive that. Mm -hmm. I I was uh, noticing on on this that if if we could uh, hear perhaps a little bit more from the fire chief with regards to these issues, I think it would be something that uh, would be valuable at this point because the fire truck can certainly go down the straight shot 20 foot easement and it appears uh, that if the fire department protocol for serving this neighborhood would be to come down Katahdin Road the 20 foot easement is approached head on uh, and if the fire chief were willing to indicate that that is how the site would be approached uh, 50 foot or 40 foot or whatever side radius is where the new driveway reaches Pilot Point Road may be not necessary at all. Uh, if the, pi if the uh, fire truck is coming along Pilot Point Road and tries to turn into a 14 foot driveway, it needs something that looks more like the original 
place where you turn in, where there are, where it's wider, where it meets the road. Uh, so hearing from the fire chief on that issue uh, would be uh, very important in, in my mind. Uh, I think your your indication of adjusting the, the curves is some is something else that uh, uh, is important. Uh, uh, but you might want to, for your own benefit, know the impact of a vehicle that's almost 10 feet by 32 feet long, the impact that that would make on your usable land, uh, because uh, without actually applying uh, curve templates for the turning of a fire, fire truck, it might be the case that coming down that 14-foot driveway uh, you might have to practically drive the fire truck right up to your building window and then reduce your lot correspondingly by 20 or, or 30 feet in order to then be able to turn around that tight a corner. Uh, and that's something that, that uh, would, would be important to see. It might require a realignment of the right-of-way itself if you can't make the turn within the, within the 20 feet. Uh, and also the, the grading uh, issue at the second sharp turn uh, is one uh, horizontal impacts can be taken care of with retaining walls, but they're very expensive, and you might want to uh, have an idea of what, what the impacts are there, again, in terms of the, uh, the usable area of the lot. Uh, I have a question for, for Maureen, if, if we've ever um, been able to um, uh, have an idea from the fire chief of how steep a road they're comfortable driving down. Uh, even a 10% road if it's uh, snowy and it's not pitched crosswise in the right direction, uh, you feel like you're taking your life in your hands just to creep down it in a car. Uh, so if you take something like this that has a, somewhere between a 30 and a 50 percent grade right now and you try to uh, stretch that out to a 10 percent grade, uh, you could easily end up needing to regrade the entire straight section on both sides of it also. Uh, so you might want to, I think that would be something that we would, I, w I would be, be comfortable knowing how steep a road the fire chief thinks he can, he can go down. I know for short stretches it's one thing, but for longer, steeper stretches it's another. Yes, Nancy. Let me get st straight. None of these roads are there presently. No, no, no more. What? There. They're proposed. <clears throat> the area in blue is the that, only that, but developed road in this area, yes. They're not there. Why didn't you think of putting the road at the top of your lot and having it come straight through? You mean in, in this location? Yeah. yeah. There's an existing right-of-way here that we wanted to take advantage of. And the grade is such that this is, this is steep, more steep at this end. The ledge uh, falls off toward the left-hand side of the lot. So it's, it's a much less steep uh, grade in this area. Well, I understand. Uh, just for information, uh, we've, we've been given, and I keep this in my planning board notebook, an uh, acetate overlay of a fire truck turning radius. <laughs> <laughs> and it's at the wrong scale for this project. It's at the wrong scale for this project, but just to, just to sort of uh, give you some idea, the outside radius of just the wheel, not the bumper overhang, uh, can be as much as 45 feet, and the inside radius uh, 
is, let's see, 42 minus 17, uh, 25 feet. So the 20-foot radius on the inside of the second turn isn't broad enough. And, the, and, and likewise, the radius on the, on the first turn isn't broad enough also, uh, basically for the fire engine to fit down around the corner, which isn't to say that you, you know, can't try to make the turns more oblique by shifting where they are and bringing them more into your lot, but those are definitely things that are better to find out before the fact than, than after the fact. Uh, according to the surveyor, the inside radius on this turn is 20 feet and the outside is 40 feet. Right. So, and, and that's what's specified in the uh, standards, I believe, is a 20-foot turning radius. But that's not for the driveway. That's for the right-of-way. The, the radiuses that the chairman is, is providing is for the actual travel surface itself, not for the right-of-way lines. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm personally not, that, not sure I'll, that there's a... Uh, getting the fire truck all the way down to the water line is something that is a... Uh, will be a feat to accomplish. Uh, it's, you, you think of something that goes from here all the way to the end of the room and it's almost 10 feet wide and it doesn't turn a very sharp line. Uh, it's a fairly large ladder truck uh, and it works better in terms of things like wide turns and, and gentle curves than trying to bring it around. Uh, uh, even though these aren't <coughs> 90 degree angles, they're maybe only 100 degree angles. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, uh, can usually be fine-tuned by a site work contractor in a more open situation where you don't have as many constraints. Uh, but, it's, uh, but in this case, it's something that uh, you'd be well served to figure out if it's going to make it down there and back before you have the construction equipment out there. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, we ran into the same problem on the uh, subdivision on the Sprague Estate, and to a certain degree, we coveted that situation by making a requirement that uh, the homes that uh, were built have uh, sprinkler systems that might be adopted in this case. Uh, if, regardless of how wide you make that road, it's still going to be treacherous in winter, as you point out. You've still got a grade. And uh, by adding uh, sprinklers, you'd uh, cut down the need to bring any large equipment uh, too far in. Mr. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> yes, David. You know, another comment that's important here is that, that it makes it important for you to know that the fire chief is satisfied, and that is that the scenario is that he gets down in here for a, an alarm, which hopefully it isn't serious, but it's a snowy condition, then he gets another alarm and he can't get out of there. And that's the seriousness of it. He can probably get down there to fight a fire that's there, but if he had to get out of there quickly to go somewhere else because something else happened in town, he might have a hard time doing it. And that's something that would make your suggestion, uh, Alex, a, a good one. Yes, Tom. Mr. Chairman, I... I the more I look at this, I, I think it really, I think it would be helpful to the applicant to have some uh, preliminary uh, engineering done on this, just from the standpoint that, as, as an example, you stated that on that second turn, uh, that, that the earthwork contractor you're talking with was going to blast that, that hill out at the corner and move that material down into the building envelope. If you look at um, your side yard here, your lot line that goes, it's about a 20-foot strip, which I don't know if that's a public access way or what that's all about, but in order to move material down the slope, you have um, no more than six feet, and it looks as though you're going to be doing tremendous fill there. That's, without a retaining wall, that's quite... Uh, I don't see how that can be done without filling onto the abutting property. I think those are sort of answers, questions that need to be answered before the contractor gets out there and starts blasting ledge. Uh, and it's much cheaper to change on a plan than it is with a, 
with a blasting contractor, I know that. So I, my preference this evening would be to table this and request that it uh, come back for uh, with, with the uh, at least some preliminary grades so that we can determine whether or not it's all going to work. Yes, Nancy. And I, I would like some more information from the fire chief, um, whether he thinks it would work for his trucks. It's my desire and, and intention to make, mm -hmm. cooperate fully to make mm -hmm. this appropriate. I'm, I'm not trying to uh, short channel any of this. Uh, I, I, I do have the elevation contours for that. Uh, uh, I can continue on with engineering mm -hmm. studies. I have had a, a PE walk the property with me and, and make his recommendation. Uh, a professional engineer, I would... Uh, I, I yes, have, Tom. Uh, just, I think, one or two other questions. One, just, just for the record, and so nothing ends up with the appeals, uh, the, there's a paper street, 50-foot undeveloped paper street. Is there any front yard setback required from a, from a paper street? You mean the part that runs along the ocean? Yeah, that runs along the ocean. It's not really a paper street. It's just, a, it's just property that runs all along the ocean and loops up the back again. And I, Something I've from seen the original subdiv subdivision plan, and that's what it shows, and it's not labeled as anything. Okay. And in, in that area, excuse me, the, the sh shoreland or the high, normal high water line setback is more restricted, mm -hmm. restrictive uh, of the, the two. Yeah. And uh, we depicted a normal setback in the building envelope here, yet the high water line setback is more restrictive. Okay. And we'll honor the more restrictive okay. uh, setback. That's our intention. When, when you, uh, there's nothing on this plan that indicates that the existing 20-foot um, right-of-way that extends from uh, across lot 92 or between lot 92 and lot 74A would be discontinued, extinguished, or anything as a result of your gaining a, uh, a right-of-way or easement along the, uh, the abutting property line. Uh, is that anything that's been discussed or is necessary? to extinguish that existing right-of-way uh, between the Mullins uh, houses? Yes. <clears throat> the, this is a paper street, and therefore we, we cannot, I mean, it's not our property, any of our property to, to uh, uh, deal with, and that's not our intention. Mm -hmm. If this easement is accepted, if, if the a permit is issued for access along this easement, then it's our intention not to develop this in and amongst ourselves. We, we have no intention of having two right-of-ways. The whole purpose mm -hmm. of, uh, of moving to this area was so that we would not develop this area. And since we, uh, uh, there are two landowners that represent these four lots, and we are both in agreement uh, then, then it's our intention not to uh, develop this, I, if this is approved. I only raise this question because properties change hands, and I happen to be on a lake where this has been an age-old age dilemma that people think they have a right-of-way from a road this way, and other people say they have it across for camp lots, and, and 100 years later, someone that owned a farm across the road is now trying to get access along one of the camp lots to the, to the uh, lakefront. So as clearly as we understand this this evening, um, it appears to me that the reason that, that or one of the reasons that Lot 92 would be granting you an easement along their side lot is to assure that there wouldn't be a driveway crossing between them and the ocean. Um, is it the intent of this uh, new easement that you would be providing with them a, uh, something that, that goes, uh, rides with your property that would state that you would no longer, that you would no longer uh, claim uh, right to the paper street, or is that something that's not legally possible to do or not of interest to anybody? We've already addressed that issue uh, as part of the, the plan. Uh, we've developed uh, a cross easement among the McMullins and us. 
that we will not develop this as a travel way in and amongst ourselves. We will not develop it as a travel way. So we, we have developed a cross easement in conjunction with the primary easement. As a paper street, does it still grant you the right to, to walk across their property? Uh, yes. It, it's my understanding. Well, across the pro paper street. It's my understanding that that there's a, a, a paper street is public property, mm -hmm. and, and uh, anybody in Shore Acres, or I assume anybody, would have access to any paper street in the town of Cape Elizabeth, and, and we have no intention of restricting that. Okay. That's not our desire. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Was there a motion made to, uh, to table? Um, no, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> it's been mentioned. <laughs> Just seems that way. <laughs> um, have you given some thought to uh, where your garage and, and driveway would be? Uh, one of the things that we've run into before is that there there is, uh, at least in some instances, uh, uh, some language in the ordinance that says that the fire truck turnaround can't be used as your own driveway. Are, are you intending to have a garage on the upper level or down on the lower level? Our intention is that the garage would be in this level, in this area here. We're, we have not gone, we have not progressed to the point of, of uh, building footprint, but mm -hmm. conceptually after discussing the, the site with several building contractors, excavation contractors, and uh, an engineer, uh, that the logical uh, place for the uh, garage would be in this area. I, I mentioned that because the, t the turnaround almost looks like a driveway coming up to a pair of garage doors, and I believe there is something, you might check with Maureen on that, there is something in the ordinance that says you can't have the turnaround be your driveway. But, but the fire chief likes the turnaround to be part of people's driveways. Works for me. It's great in case of a garage fire. It keeps it. It keeps it also <laughs> keeps it plowed and that's, nice and passable. That's his, that's his position. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Nancy. We want to table in motion. Are we ready for that? Uh, may, I, may I ask one more question before yeah. you? Sure, Tom. If you have to. I, I, I don't want to have. <laughs> you want to spin it out. <laughs> I mean, we're not even at 9 o'clock yet. Come on. Uh, no, uh, there's on uh, Susan and Mark McMullen's lot, lot uh, 74A, there is a uh, light dash line that divides that lot in half, and there's an uh, indicator that shows that that's one lot. Do you happen to know what that light dash line indicates across uh, those lots? Here? Or, or no, not the stone wall. It's the, uh, there's a, uh, it, it crosses through a note that says, old iron found, rusted off top, used. <laughs> Classic survey note. Uh, I think what you're referring to is this line here, this line here, this line, this line. Is it's actually, yeah. it's a continuous line that, uh, do you see the label in your lot that says 74B? Yes. It, it rests right on that line. Oh, okay, yeah. yes, the, in the original developers' plans, these were all two lots. Oh, they were. As, as Shore Acres was uh, developed and, and the, the subdivision plan was recorded in 1911, these were all two lots, every one of these. Uh, 95 was not, 96 was not, but these were two lots. Somewhere between 1911 and, and whenever, these two lots were joined together. Oh, and that's indicated by the, the, the Z symbol, uh, and that's why those are showing up. In the subdivision plan, this is lot 7, mm -hmm. lot 8, lot 9, lot 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Is there a Z symbol on lot 74B? I'm trying to get you an extra lot. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, there's no symbol, but this is... It's already been merged. This, this is one lot. Okay. It's described as Shore Acres lot 10 and 11, the city describes it as lot 74B. Okay. Oh, okay. But in the deed, it is two lots. That's all. Thank you. Okay. And any other discussion? Uh, would anyone like to make a motion? <clears throat> 
Oh. <laughs> oh, I move that we table until the next planning board meeting um, this um, submission. I, you can all chip in what you need to uh, further explore, but I, I would like you to explore the um, road with the fire chief, um, the accessibility uh, of the fire engines. Um, anybody have anything? In addition, I would like to go just one step further and have the chief write what? a letter. I would like to go one step further and have the chief write a letter of approval. Well, we should hear from the At chief. Least hear from the chief. Yeah. And uh, anything else? Well, I'm waiting for a vote to approve your motion, then we'll have discussion and we'll add to it thereafter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Ask a question. Yes. Uh, Regarding the, the right of way, um, the, uh, the, the standards indicate a 30 foot, yet the board has the, under the technical amendments, has the ability to reduce that right of way as needed. Uh, can I approach this private access way with the 20 foot right of way in mind? in the straight areas, adjusting the right-of-way width as needed at the turns to make this accessible. That would be my desire. Instead of requiring a blanket 30-foot right-of-way, which seems inappropriate in an existing 20-foot right-of-way situation, and for other reasons I indicated, to construct, design the road with the corners Mm -hmm. in question to be appropriate and maintain a 20-foot right away in other areas. If I understand you correctly, um, that's what you should do and um, with the fire chief. Yeah. Um, could we have a second for the motion first? No. And then proceed yeah. to discussion? Second. Uh, further discussion on the easement width. Yes, Tom. With respect to the last question, I think uh, I don't have an issue with, with it being identified as a 20-foot easement as long as you can uh, complete the work within the 20-foot easement that's necessary to construct the road and, and provide appropriate drainage. My sense is, given the ledgy character here and so forth, that you may, um, if, you, if you encroach within your own property, I'm concerned that, that you might end up encroaching beyond your property into the 20-foot strip, in which case the easement would have to encroach within your own property on lot 74B and then uh, running uh, between 74B and, and lot 95, you could go either way uh, in the inside radius as you have room to do. But I think the, the real critical area, probably it may not require as much earthwork as I'm thinking it may, but uh, coming down from Pilot Point Road in that first straight section, uh, if you cannot complete the construction activity within the 20-foot right-of-way because of ledge removal or having to cut back side slopes uh, or other drainage or seating requirements, then the road and, and anything that requires drainage within that road would, would have to, sat I would have to be satisfied that it will fit within the 20-foot right-of-way. If the grading cannot be completed within the 20-foot right-of-way, then there would have to be provided to the board a construction easement from, from uh, the McMullins or the owners of, of Lot 92 or any effective, affected off-site properties. That's the only way I can think of, of not providing the 30-foot right-of-way if it's additional width is needed for construction. You, you term that a construction easement? When the, a good example is if the Department of Transportation comes along your front yard and they, uh, they're widening the road and they, and they have to grade up into people's front lawns, it, once they get past the right-of-way line, then what they usually do is refer to that as a construction easement and, it allow, and a grading easement and allows them to fine grade the, the area, replant the lawn. And, but typically all of the improvements, the sidewalks and esplanades and trees and roads all fit within the right-of-way. 
<coughs> Any further discussion on the on the motion itself? Uh, we can have. Uh, I'll we can make have every effort to, to discuss that issue. We can also have. Uh, I think it's a very we can also have more discussion or for any questions before you leave uh, after the motion. If if you have any further questions or anybody else uh, has other things that need to be discussed. I'm all set. Any further discussion? Uh, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor, indicate by raising your right hand. It's unanimous. Uh, do you have any further questions for things that... My understanding is that you won't further dialogue with our chief. You won't further engineering reports regarding the, the construction of uh, primarily the two terms. Yeah, sh showing the grading and then the actual uh, impact of the fire engine turning radiuses on on the face of the earth, that would, that'll... That would also give the fire chief something really that he can then uh, make a judgment from also. Uh, one other item which I'd like to raise for the board, does anybody here uh, feel that a site walk in between now and next month would be of, of value or should we wait? Uh, before the snow falls. Before the snow falls. Does, does anybody <laughs> feel... Um, that they'd like that they'd like to see this, or or is it possible to drive drive by and walk down in? Can board members get access to the to the lay of the land? Yeah, would that would it be a problem if we if we can't schedule a site walk if we individually just came by and walked down to the ocean and walked back up the hill? Not at all. Okay. <clears throat> but it, it's my intention in, in the meantime to to approach this further as requested mm -hmm. with the civil engineer. Mm -hmm. What's the easiest mm -hmm. way to get to it? Over the existing right of way or to come down? Uh, this is, uh, has a lot of underbrush and grown up in this area. Uh, you're, you're welcome to come through our yard, 11 Pilot Point Road, yeah. as needed. Uh, we have no objection to that at all. Uh, otherwise, uh, it could be approached from the uh, existing right-of-way that's shown on the plan, which is the drive driveway for 19 and 15 <coughs> pilot point. <coughs> 19 and 17 can, pilot point. Can your boat fit in there, Steve? Excuse me? Can we take your boat over there? <laughs> My boat? <laughs> yes, Nancy. <coughs> Thank you for your patience. You've been very patient with us. Okay. Thank you very much. You. At this point in time, I will uh, give the chair back to Mr. Cotter to conclude the meeting. <laughs>